Hopkins School District has more than 6,000 students, and this year there are four new principals. Starting a job like that in August, not easy, especially when doing it in the middle of these times of COVID-19 and unrest in the Twin Cities. The new principal at Hopkins High School, Crystal Ballard. She's been an assistant principal for the last seven years in the Osseo and Minneapolis school districts. She graduated with a bachelor's degree in elementary and secondary education from Grambling State and got a master's in deaf education at the University of Minnesota. Hopkins phasing in a hybrid education plan. Christian Cordero live with the new principal at the school this morning. Christian. Hey there, Jason. Yeah, I'm here with Principal Ballard. Um, one month into the job, it might feel like five years in some ways. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you tell me, how have things been going so far? Things have been going well. However, there's always challenges. Um, but I'm really excited about this school year. And when I try and think about one emotion to describe like the way that I'm feeling, I don't think that really exists. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's excited, sometimes it's nervous, sometimes it's concerned, yeah. um, concerned for our communities as to uh, what they're dealing with, how they're navigating, and then also um, in thinking of being concerned and worried about our teachers. Like this whole paradigm shift of teaching in front of a class and now we're in front of computers. Yeah. And they're not able to engage, they're not able to make those connections. The things that you're able to do in a physical space are very different than the things that you're able to do in a virtual space. That, and yeah. That emotional roller coaster that you just talked about could be real tough, right? So how do you, like, what's your focus in all of it? I think um, my focus has been really trying to make sure that our teachers are supported and they feel that they need, they have what they need in order to do their jobs and making sure that our scholars are feeling supported and our families as well. So when I'm focusing on those things, it seems as if the task at hand um, is less challenging because mm -hmm. my focus is, is on what can I do to make this process, to make this experience easier. Although it's very difficult, yeah. it will never be easy. It will never be easy. Part of your focus for your career has been on equity. Um, and with everything that's been going on this summer, how have you been managing through all of that? Wow, that's a really big question. I, I think, I don't know if I'm at a point where I'm saying I'm managing it. Mm. In some ways I'm just surviving, right? Because I'm experiencing the same things that our communities are experiencing. Um, you have to create like shelter and refuge for scholars and places for them to be able to speak and speak their truth and have their voices at, at the center of what we're doing. And the reason I bring that up is because at the beginning of the school year, we started planning for a Hopkins Strong Start. Mm -hmm. And in our Hopkins Strong Start, it was an opportunity for our scholars to become acclimated with our Canvas learning system. So as we're doing this planning and we're thinking about all the things that they need to know for the learning management system, we had to take a step back and reflect and say, we have not addressed the traumatic things that they have experienced since we last saw them in March. So how might we be able to create a space on the first day of school so our scholars can at least have an opportunity to speak about it yeah. and for us to not carry on as things are, are normal and we're just doing distance learning sure. because it's so much more than that. And we had an opportunity for them to engage in conversations and racial affinity groups with volunteers to just have an opportunity to decompress and yeah. start the school year in a different way. The school in the physical sense is where so many of those conversations happen. You grew up in Detroit, this is the last question I have. You grew up in Detroit um, where you had, as you mentioned, a lot of black and brown teachers throughout your career and then you came here to Minnesota and you didn't see it as much. Was that part of your purpose of staying here? Absolutely. I thought about my experience as an adult at the University of Minnesota where for the first time in my life, I was the only, I was the only black person in my department the only black person in my classes. And I thought about that experience for our scholars and what will it mean for scholars in K-12 settings to see people of color, not only as teachers, but in leadership position. And that is part of the reason that I've continued to stay here and move through the ranks to become a school principal. We appreciate that, Principal Ballard. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here, for, for being here right now and for being here at Hopkins High School. Um, Jason, we talked all summer long about doing the hard work. She's been doing the hard work uh, really her entire career. And so what she said about bringing people to the table, but then also listening to those voices at the table, is something that we'll certainly, uh, you know, keep discussing and keep keeping an eye on. No question. Principal Ballard, thank you. Good luck to the school year, to all those new principals in Hopkins. A remarkable start to the year for sure, Christian. Thank you.